Hey guys, Brendan Odom Productions here, and welcome to another Visual Basic.net tutorial. In this tutorial, I will be using Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, uh, it would be the paid version, and um, I will be demonstrating how to use enumerations in Visual Basic.net. Now before I actually start this tutorial, I would like to thank Nino Priori on vbcity.com uh, for actually teaching me these knowledge, this knowledge. And um, now I'm going to, going to go ahead and uh, share that knowledge with you. So let's go ahead and talk about enumerations. When you're programming, um, and you need to keep track of some real-world information, but in some programming form, the default go-to for most programmers is to assign some sort of integer value to a certain English word. This is usually known as enumerations. Um, if you've seen my Java tutorial on enumerations, um, what we would do is create a whole other class with a bunch of static variables that actually have names that correspond to integer identities. However, Visual Basic makes enumerations a lot easier than that. It allows you to simply create a new enumeration, set up a, a certain amount of members, and um, then go from there. It automatically assigns the integer values and it makes programming a whole lot easier. So one of the main, um, or one of the things we can actually look at in this tutorial is directions. Now there are four basic directions, up, down, right, and left. So let's go ahead and create an enumeration for those directions and use them to correspond visually with our program. So let's go ahead and jump right into designing our program. Now the, what I'm going to do is um, give the program some sense of direction. So I'm actually going to add four checkboxes to the application, um, one on each corresponding direction, if you will. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do some renaming and uh, house cleaning here. So on this top checkbox, I'm going to rename it to top box, and um, I'm going to actually set the text to nothing. On this right checkbox, I'm going to rename it to right box, and set the text to nothing. This bottom checkbox, I'm going to rename to bottom box, and set the text to nothing. And this left checkbox, I'm going to name left box, and set the text to nothing. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a little um, organizing. First of all, I'm going to move all of these checkboxes all the way to their the sides of the form that they need to be, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and center them. So I'm going to highlight the top and bottom checkboxes here, go to the Format Toolstrip menu item, go to Center and Form, and then select Horizontally. Now we were actually pretty close to the center. I'm going to do the same thing with the right and left, Center and Form vertically, and so now we have four checkboxes right where they need to be. So let's go ahead and jump right into the code. So we're going to double click on our form, delete the default code snippet that it enters, and let's go ahead and get started with our enumeration. So as I said, we're going to be creating an enumeration of a direction with up, down, left, and right. So all we need to do is say public enum, short for enumeration, and we're going to call ours direction. So if we press enter, it automatically turns this into a block with an end enum section, and then it alerts us that we need to actually put in some members. Now inserting members into a Visual Basic .NET um, enumeration is actually extremely simple. All we need to do is declare their names. So ours are going to be up, down, left, right. So all we need to do is declare the names of the members on separate lines, and then we're good to go. Our enumeration is officially set up. But how do we actually use this enumeration? Well, what I'm actually going to do is create another method that will actually interact with this enumeration in order to um, um, my apologies <laughs> in order to actually uh, interact with the visual aspect of our program. So I'm going to actually create a new subroutine, public sub called interact. And this subroutine is actually going to take in a parameter of a direction, so by val dir as direction. As you can see, we already have direction set up, it's already in IntelliSense, and it says enum direction as integer. Now, it says as integer even though we did not actually set up it to be an integer. And this is because Visual Basic.net actually automatically takes care of the integer for us. So what it did is it actually assigned up a value of 0, down a value of 1, left a value of 2, and right a value of 3. And it's going to go ahead and keep track of these integers so we don't have to. So it's pretty much doing all the dirty work for us so our programs can look nice and neat on the inside. How nice, right? Good on you, Microsoft. Good on you. 
you did something right. <laughs> Windows 8. <laughs> anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. So if the direction sent in is up, we're going to want to um, actually activate the checkbox that um, has uh, the checkbox that corresponds to the top location. However, we're going to be doing something a little tricky um, with the actual checkbox checked, but let's go ahead and dive into this first. So we're going to say if dir equals, and then as you can see, IntelliSense already adds in our enumerations. However, I'm going to manually type it for programming sake. So our enumeration is called direction, and then we just press dot, and then we get to select one of our enumerations. So let's start with up. If dir equals direction dot up, then we are going to actually going to be able to interact with our program. So I'm going to say top box dot checked equals. Now what we want to do is we actually want to send in the opposite of what the checked status already is. So instead of just sending in true or false, we're going to send in not top box dot checked. So if the top box is checked, um, then this is going to be true, and then the not's going to turn it into false. So our top box dot checked is going to be false, thereby unchecking a uh, checked checkbox. Now that's kind of abstract, and if you don't understand that, that's okay, um, because this tutorial is about enumerations and not opposite logic, if you will. As long as you understand the enumerations, you're good. So let's go ahead and set up a case for our next enumeration. So we're going to say else if dir equals direction dot down, then we're going to say down box, or bottom box, I think it is, bottom box dot checked equals not bottom box. Dot checked. Now I've never actually tried this uh, opposite logic, if you will, before. So let's hope it works out, okay? So if the um, if we are not sending in a direction of up or down, we're going to say if dir is direction dot right, um, then we are going to say right box dot checked equals not right right box dot checked. And finally, we can do a case for if the direction is left dot left. Then left box dot checked equals not left box dot checked. So now we have our interact method set up. Now this this combination of enumerations and interact method is currently not doing anything. However, we can definitely make it do something very easily. So let's go ahead and go over this interact sub once again. So if the dir, which is sent in as a parameter, is our enumerations up value, which as you can tell equals zero. Um, then we're just going to set the top box checked status equal to the opposite of what it currently is. The same thing, if it's not up, then we check if it's down, and do the same thing for the bottom box. If it's not down, then we check for right, and do the same thing for the right box. And if it's not left, then we do the same thing for the left box. So let's go ahead and get started on making this actually work. So we can go ahead and add some sort of buttons to the program. So I'm just going to add a button in the middle here, called button 1, and I'm going to duplicate it uh, four times. Now there's no reason to actually rename these buttons, but I'm going to change the text. So the text on button 1 is going to be down. Text on button 4 here is going to be up. Text on button 2 is going to be left. And text on button 4 or 3 is going to, I don't even know, is going to be right. And then we can actually insert code snippets for these buttons. So if we double click on the down button here, we can actually call the interact method directly. So we're going to say interact and um, then we're going to send in a parameter. And the dir is actually going to be our, um, or the parameter that we send in is actually going to be our enumeration. So as you can see, IntelliSense already knows this, and it's giving us the option of down, left, right, or up. So this is our up button, I, b I believe it was, or maybe it was down. I don't even remember. I think it was down. So we're just going to double click on this IntelliSense menu, and um, go ahead and close the parentheses. And good, it was down. So then we can do the same thing for all the other ones. On the button 4, we're going to interact, and we're going to send in direction.up as our parameter. Um, this left button here, button 2, we're going to interact and send in direction.left. And finally, um, this right button here, we're going to send in interact and then send in direction.right. Uh, IntelliSense has our back 24-7, so we're good there. So what we can actually do here is test out this application. So we can actually start debugging, and if we press the down button here, we can see that the bottom checkbox is actually checked. And if we press it again, it unchecks it. So we can actually check all of the checkboxes by clicking on all the buttons, and then um, unclicking them, or clicking them again to uncheck. 
So the up button corresponds to the up, the left button corresponds to the left, right button corresponds to the right, and down button corresponds to the bottom. I do realize these are out of order, but that adds to the fun, right? So let's go ahead and go over the program's logic one more time. So we press the down button, uh, which is button 1, which calls the interact method on direction.down. So once we do that, the down checkbox, or the bottom checkbox changes. Well, that is because what we're doing is we're jumping right to the interact method, and we're sending in down as a direction. So it's going to automatically skip to if direction is direction.down. So then we're just going to say bottom box dot checked equals not bottom box dot checked. So we're just changing the checkbox to the opposite of its current value. Nothing too complicated going on, but enumerations makes this super easy to keep track of which which thing is up, down, right, and left. Now, so uh, we already stated that these um, enumerations actually send well, internally what they do is they assign integer values to these actual words. So with that being said, we can actually kind of trick the program uh, into thinking it's enumerations by actually adding in the integer values. So here we say else if dir is direction.left, well we can also see that left equals 2. So instead of direction.left here, we can actually replace the whole thing with 2 and then go ahead and try it. If we debug our application and click on left, it still works just as intended. And that's because direction.left and 2 are actually completely equal to each other. So that's what's going on the internal structure, so you can understand it better. But um, if you were to open up this program, um, as, let's say a year in the future, and you had no idea what was going on, you would not understand what this 2 was doing. However, if you stay, keep direction.left, you would understand that we're checking for a direction to see if it equals left, and if it does, we're editing the left checkbox. So this is actually kind of fun to play around with, because so, you can just uh, select directions. If you want to have a lot of fun, you could sync it to the arrow keys on your keyboard or something. But right now, we're just trying to keep it simple. So this is how you use enumerations in Visual Basic.net. Um, there are several other things that you can use with enumerations. Um, you can actually use them to create properties or attributes of a, an application. Um, I'll actually be going over that in a future tutorial, so stay tuned for that. So thanks for watching this video on how to use uh, enumerations in Visual Basic.net. Hopefully it helped you. It definitely helped me when I learned about it. Uh, but hopefully it helps you just as much. Once again, thanks for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe this, uh, to this channel, Brandonia Productions. And I hope to see you all in the future. Have a fantastic day. Peace.